Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back. So today we have a new ESC that's going to be tested, and this is the Racer Star Metal. I think it's called the V2. This is the second version, so they've released two of these. The previous one was really good. This one's actually even slightly better. Now, I have tested this on a 6S with the low ESR capacitor and without low ESR capacitor. That's what I'm doing with all of these ESCs because we can see if there's any issues that come along. Something pretty interesting about this ESC, it's supposedly rated up to an 8S, which is pretty insane. That's one thing. Supposedly it's IP65 rated, which means it's somewhat water resistant, possibly due to conformal coating. And it has a really fat heat sink. And not only that, the power dis or the heat dissipation is phenomenal on this. But let's put these to the side and let's talk about something that is really, really annoying with this. If you do purchase this, and uh, as you can tell, the connector would go right here. However, when I first, you know, set it up to go test it, you know, I basically did what anybody would do. We solder the motor wires up top and I wasn't able to stick that uh, connector in. So for anyone who's going to purchase, I highly recommend you solder your motor connections or your LiPo connections on the bottom here. However, they do have holes for the provided low ESR capacitor, which is also very much recommended you add. Now, stating that it's an 8S, it actually tested one of the best on a 6S without a low ESR capacitor which is a really good thing. Now, if we flip this over here, you see the, the filtration looks somewhat minimal. Maybe there are some caps under here. We can see a little, I think that's one of them right there. Yeah, we can see some caps in there, but these caps right here really filter out quite a lot. They're pretty massive as well, as you can see that right there. So they're doing a really, really great job, which is really nice here. And they are using a F1 microcontroller unit, which is BL Heli 32. So that is also a huge addition using pretty big FETs that are supposedly rated up to an 8S, which is pretty insane. However, something into consideration here. Do you know what FETs they're using right here? They're the same exact ones on the new Hobbywing, the latest and greatest from Hobbywing, which is pretty, pretty insane. I just actually noticed that right now because I wanted to see if it's using an N channel or a P channel uh, or just two N channels. So it is using two N channels. It is the same FETs that are found on the Hobbywing, the latest Hobbywing uh, ESC, which I'll have linked down below. So, you know, one of the only downsides currently to this is the connector here. So enough talking, uh, let's go ahead and get testing. Alright guys, so the results are in and this is the Racer Star Metal V2. So what are we looking at here? Up top we have the tests without a low ESR capacitor and on the bottom we have the tests with the low ESR capacitor. Now if you don't know how this works, the this is the throttle noise level test which tests the noise at each throttle level 10, 25, 50%, 75% and 100% throttle. Both of these do exactly the same test, however one was with, with the low ESR capacitor which is the bottom one and the top without. And on the right, we have a simulated aggressive flight maneuvers, which means it just simulates a super, super harsh flight that's more than likely you'll never be able to replicate in real life. So it's it's considered a stress test because I've had ESCs blow up on this test before. So immediately, this is doing way better without a low ESR capacitor than everything else I've tested, but I haven't tested many on a 6S. And uh, we're going to start comparing it with the T-Motor, the Mamba, whatever I've tested so far on a 6S. You can see what the motor is doing. You can see, oh, full throttle right here. It's, it's really nice and really clean. For example, I'm going to bring in the T-Motor uh, 
simulated aggressive flight maneuvers without a low ESR capacitor, uh, which is the bottom one now. And as you can tell, that the the t the, the racer star is actually doing pretty good. And again, the FETs on it are really good FETs. I think they're tosh Toshibas. So in terms of handling, uh, it's pr the performance is going to be really great because the FETs are at least good. And I didn't have any stutters, so in reality, it should handle pretty well because those capacitors or the filtration on board is really suppressing a lot of um, voltage spikes and, and, and all this little harsh electricity that's going back and forth, which is w really nice to see here on such a brand. I'm also gonna bring in the uh, throttle noise level test of the T-Motor without a low ESR capacitor. You can see that, yeah, still the Racer Star is doing slightly better here. So as you can tell, without the low ESR capacitor, um, in terms of filtration and possibly long use, the Racer Star is handling itself very well. Now. Let's bring in the T motor with a low ESR capacitor and compare it against the racer start with the low ESR capacitor. So here's the T motor. Now I've added the low ESR capacitor that was provided with each package. So they weren't using, uh, actually most of them come with a Rubicon anyway. So I think these two are actually using Rubicon. So now we're looking at it different. Up top is a T motor with the low ESR capacitor and on the bottom is the racer star with the low ESR capacitor. They're basically identical here. Um, even the power delivery seems to be on par with the uh, T motor, which is really great here and beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, both of them. Um, no complaints. I mean, they're gonna perform identical basically, but you will save a couple bucks here and there with the racer star. Uh, but the, the placement of the connector is really annoying on this and that is something to take note of here Now let's bring in the mamba because I think the mamba is the best price to performance ratio I've ever seen here and uh, We'll bring in the low ESR test right now. So here's the mamba. Here's the throttle noise And we're gonna have to put it up here now the mamba is gonna be up top This is the new f7. I'll have everything linked down below again guys check those out those greatly support the channel so you know, this is still a good result, and this is uh, these are beautiful results actually. Both of them with the low ESR capacitor. Now you can tell the Mamba is slightly noisier. I mean, this isn't really noisy. This is like almost a perfect result. But in in just in the sake of looking at this graph, you can see that the Racer Star is slightly better. But how much? It's not really comprehensible, or it's not really noticeable in real life. But um, they're basically identical to be honest. The, the, well, the, the low ESR capacitor does magic. But when we come to the the throttle noise level test, we can actually see the slight differences here. For example, at, hold on, did I change it? Mamba, okay. I was trying to zoom in, but this is a really crappy software from Microsoft now. They updated the older one. I want to zoom in on the 75% throttle here. Okay, so up top again is the Mamba. <clears throat> so you can see that uh, the Racer Star is handling itself slightly better. How much better? Not really, you know, it's not really that much better, but I mean, it's just in the sake of this review, it's slightly better here. But again, the Mamba just has a overall better uh, price to performance ratio and they give you quite a lot of things and um, it seems to be very well so far. So it seems to be pretty good. So yeah, overall the Racer Star is actually handling itself very well and I would trust it on a 6S build, but keep in mind the connector is in a really shitty placement which can be annoying, so think ahead before building instead of having to deslaughter your lipos and connecting them to the bottom or using a tweezer to try to get that into place because the last thing you want to do is break the connector, the female part that's on the ESC while you're trying to force it in. And if you don't know if you don't have some good solder skills, to remove the connector and just solder directly, then you might be shit out of luck. So keep that in mind, be very careful how you solder it, think ahead, but overall its performance is good so far. And again, I'll have everything linked down below. If you could support me on Patreon, that'd be super great to enable me to do more things like this. And I'll see you in the next one guys. Peace out.